Now, uh, another person that you've sparred was uh, David Benavidez. And yes. We brought up earlier, he's going to go up to 175. Yeah. Seems that he's taking the approach of, like, you know, if I can't get Canelo, I'm not going to wait right. too long, and I'm going to go chase the winner of Arthur Betterbeev and a person he also sparred, uh, Bivol. But to get there, an interim fight against Alexander Goshek, right? Mm-hmm. I was thinking something like that. And uh, you shared the ring with David, and you shared the ring with Alexander. I found out yesterday. Yeah. And uh, what's your thoughts on that? That's a... Uh... Um, David is tough. I ain't gonna lie. I was... That was like a top four tough sparring sessions I ever had. Like, it was tough. You know, um, I had to really, like, bite down. Like, okay, I gotta get focused because I can't... You know, David is big. He's, he's big, so I had to focus, but... Um, it was real good work. Um, I, I, I'm leaning more towards Alexander Volznik. Really? Yeah, because David's not used to taking big punches from bigger guys, all that body weight leaning on you and all that. And, and David used to fighting small guys where they can't hurt him. This fight, he's, he, he ain't going to be able to throw them punches like that because this kid is a very good counter puncher. He can crack, too. He put it down Stevenson in a coma. So it was like David going to have to be careful. He ain't going to be able to walk in and do what he normally do and take punches and, and you know, the mother guys, he's too big for him, so he can, like, catch one's elbows and, and wear him down like that. But this guy, he ain't going to be able to do that. He's going to really have to move his head. Really going to have to make – I think he's going to have to make some adjustments this fight. When, you know, playing devil's advocate, you know, when Alexander's best win was against an older Adonis Stevenson, mm -hmm. right? And so in that – Still dangerous. Yes, but I'm like I said, I'm gonna play the yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the right, comments yeah, section because yeah, right, yeah. you know the comments gonna be flooded. Oh, it's Adonis is older. Yeah, he was. And and Alexander hasn't had a great win since that fight, and and, and after the Arthur better be fight. You know. But okay, I, I got a question. For people, I got to answer for that too. That's that, that that's not just him. That's most fighters. When most fighters be on the rise to the top and they lose, they take easy fights, easy fights, easy fights, and you really don't see them fighting nobody to a some super big fight. So that's not, that's not just Alexander Volznik. That's most fighters. Like, how many fighters you see lose, come back and fight another tough fight right back? Ryan Garcia. <laughs> well, you actually, talking about immediately? Yeah. I mean, that Oscar Dorothy dude was kind of in his ass. <laughs> just, but, hey, 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 I get what you're saying. You're talking about back to back, right? Right. right. Like, that's what, like, back to like back. lose a fight and come back and fight another a tough fight. Of that, of that kind of, everybody get, get their confidence back up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody do that. Except for Lonnie B. But everybody do that. Well, I mean, let's see. Who's someone that recently, or just in general, took? A, yeah, I, I, I wait. Took a tough. Loss. Look at Denny Jacobs when he lost to the kid, um, Dimitri Pirov. Yeah. How long was it before he thought fought another tough fight? When was the Peter Quillen fight? Exactly. That I just <laughs> exactly. It was like like I want don't quote me about two three years later, he fought Peter Quillen. Like you know what I'm saying? So. I mean. What would you consider going from a champion to champion? Or yeah, just... like like a fight, another fight of that, uh, 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 another fight of that caliber, that that caliber of an opponent. Who got? Uh... Like I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna Google something. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm 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 think of something. I'm, a, like... I'm really a student of the game. Like I really pay attention to everything when it comes to boxing. I pay attention to everything when it comes to boxing. Without any tune-ups, any comeback. I'm going to be thinking while I continue to ask questions. I'll give you one. Sugar Ray Leonard, when he came off of that long for five years and came back and fought Hagler. No, but that's a long. No, that's not the same. It's like someone literally fighting the top guy, like a, a good opponent, losing and going straight right into it, like back-to-back right. -back losses. Right. And getting washed. Like so, Chad so, Austin did that, didn't he? He fought Andre Ward and then Adonis Stevenson. Yeah, but that's at two different weights. But, oh, now we, no, nah, okay. Nah, okay. No, I'm saying that was that. <laughs> okay, no, okay, that was, okay. Like, because he moved down 68, that one, and then he, he, he I think he was, he was already the champ at, uh, he, yeah, he was already the champ at Light Heavy. Yeah. So he just moved down to fight Chad. He tried to, you know what I'm saying? It ain't worked, so he moved war. back up to, you know what I'm saying? And he, that was, I think Adonis was his mandatory. So, it ain't like that was his choice. It's like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Because he even said it. He said, I had to Google you. I didn't know who you was. They, they told me I had to fight you. I had to Google you. So no, no, no fights of like, up and down. Like, Kell Brook essentially went from Triple G to Errol Spence. That's a good one. That's a good one. 
That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, that's a good okay. The, and then he got his eyes that's, broken on that's, both that's, sides. That's actually a great one. He got his eyes broken on both both Shout sides. Shout out to Kel Brooks. That was that was gangster right there. Uh, just so you're saying what Ryan's doing is not gangster. I mean, he, he, no, but I'm, I'm not saying it's not. But what I'm saying is, just well, literally without that one. Opponent yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, like he lost the tank, came back, fought. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And you know, mind you, he, he, he didn't look the greatest. You know what's going to kill me right now? Because I'm just kind of sleepy. Like, the comments going to have, like, 20 different examples. And I'm going to be like, I know all of these. I just... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm... Listen, enlighten me, because I'm thinking, I'm like, who? Who? I, it's just because just I, I, you put me on the spot. That's granted. But, all right, enough enough of that. It's simply to Alexander. Why? Like, why David's big... Is he that much bigger? I mean, Alexander is that much bigger than David Benavides? No, I'm saying he's not much bigger, but I'm saying this, he used to take punches from bigger guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he's used to, you know, that pressure. Like, the pressure that David put on guys, he's used to that. David don't put more pressure on guys than Beater B. You know what I'm saying? And I think once, and then David's not used to taking them heavy punches from guys like Alexander Volsny. But what if David washes him? Then, then what? Then, then he got my respect. I mean, he got my respect now if he even taking a fight. But at that but it's like it's like yo, he really he he yo, he might be a monster. He might be a monster. A monster to beat Arthur? No, they don't still don't beat Arthur. Yeah, let's say he washes him like way worse than Arthur. Arthur I mean, maybe probably from what I seen from David, I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, I just don't think that's gonna happen. Wait, you're picking Alexander to beat David? Yeah. I mean, Stop. I'm I'm, I'm picking, really yeah. I'm picking that's, that's a bold hey, pick because hey, I think everyone's going to lean towards David. Yeah, because they don't know nothing. Listen, look at this kid fight. Like, just see, people get it because he lost to Arthur. They say, oh, David's going to run through him. He lost to Arthur and gave Arthur a hell of a, the best fight to date. And he was winning the fight. Arthur just a different type of dog. He just like, this, you're not going to win. I'm going to knock you out. And Arthur just keep chopping. Put it like this. The shots that Alexander Volsley hit Arthur with, he hit David with, he's going to flatline David. Flatline. Really? <laughs> oh, shit. So you think this is a, a, a match make mistake from PBC? Yes. Put it, I, I, I can prove it. He got dropped by Ronald Reville. But he was younger. Oh, oh, oh now that play a part. I, oh, I'm, now I'm playing devil's younger. advocate, Yeah, right? okay, okay, okay. But Ronald Reville, listen. I gotta do I, this. To, you I gotta be, do this chat. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. But here's my thing with David, right? They put this thing on him, the Mexican monster. They put that title on him. Somebody like Ronald, it's not like Ronald's a big puncher. It's not like he's slick. You know what I'm saying? I love Ronald. Ronald's a, no special effects, a straight up and down guy. And gave him, David, a life and death fight the first time. Wouldn't you say that he was not focused then? And I'm I, trying to think. I'm trying I, I, to think. I don't, all, I don't go with that. I'm my, trying to think of all the narratives. Listen, he wasn't focused. He was young. It was first title fight. That's why you supposed to. That's when you young. When you young, you supposed to be running through everything. Because they say that boxing is a young man's sport, right? Mm. Ain't that what they say? They say boxing is a young man's sport, and you fighting for a title at 20 years old. So I would think, as a fighter, that you would be the more focused than you can ever be. Not necessarily. There's a lot of fighters that get more focused afterwards. Wouldn't you think? Like no, when that money on the when that money on the wood, when that mo listen, when that check on the wood, a world title. You 20 years old. You said, "Oh, he was the youngest super middleweight champ ever. He wanted that 20." So y'all will hope you be super focused. You got a chance to make history, and you don't be focused. You all wasn't focused. I, 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 uh, first of all, he foremost. wasn't focused. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm not saying he said that, but I'm just saying, I'm just a rebuttal to what you said. No, you know what's funny? All right, so you're bleeding into interviews. I didn't even get to say that. What? <laughs> I did say yesterday he was the super, uh, the young super middleweight champion of the world. Yeah. But but simply the fact is, just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. It's, it's just, why can't a young fighter who wasn't potentially focused has turned into a more focused fighter? You know, there's fighters that, let's just say, Bernard Hopkins mm -hmm. lost his first fight. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you, or Tevin Farmer. Mm -hmm. Would you assume that they got better in focus later on versus early in their career? Well, the thing with the Hopkins, I just like inexperience. No amateur background, just inexperience. And I think once he had that first loss, he's like, okay, this is what I got to do now. Okay, I know what I was doing wrong. 
this is what I got to do. As far as the fighting part, Tevin Farmer, that, that could be the case. Like, he wasn't focused. Because Tevin Farmer is gifted, man. Like, he's gifted. I would love to see him fight. So, using that, right? right? Yeah, like, I, I give you Tevin Farmer. Okay. I give you that one. Okay, but, but, but why can't... And I'm not saying he wasn't focused. Maybe yeah. there's a lot of, like, life situations, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, why can't that apply with David at the Ronald Gravel fight? And now he's, like, coming to himself that, like, he's that, like, I'm that guy. And that's, I want Canelo out for rest. Okay, so you say, why can't it be? That, that okay, his okay. performance as a young age came from inexperience, he was young, yada, yada, right? Mm -hmm. And I know, I know I was, when we were talking about the, the Devin and Tank thing, right? And obviously, Tank was older, Devin was younger. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we were kind of assessing from that point, from the sparring, mm -hmm. that he was just a kid. So why can't someone from David's stature who's just a kid, now fight Alexander, have the best performance of his career because okay. he's in his prime. I got a perfect rebuttal for that. First of all, Devin was a kid. He was 16. David was a man. He was a younger man, but he was 20. And what Devin and Tank did was in sparring. It don't count. Ronald and David, 20 years old, fighting for a world title on Showtime, both getting paid, that's where it counts. What about Canelo Alvarez? When you say Canelo Alvarez has tremendously gotten better over the years. And when he was early on hitting the scene fighting what Cotto's brother, and and like at that point he got hurt. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't you say at that point you would have looked at him and been like, yo, that dude is not beating Sergey Kovalev. It's like if it was came down from that position to in the, in the future. I see what you're saying, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff that go on that we don't see either. There's a lot of stuff that go on as far as like with the politics stuff that we don't see. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just speaking. But um, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Me, personally. I'm waiting for you to throw the heat. I'm just... Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just no, I'm, 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 like, me, personally, I just don't see David beating Isaiah involvement. Like, he's been in too many tough fights. I don't think David brings nothing to the table. David's not a big... He, like, he's, he, he don't punch hard. I can't see David stopping him. I can't see David overwhelming him. When you say that, because you've been in the ring with both of them, yeah. like, does Alexander hit that much? He can crack. Can crack? Or I see that close. much better. He can crack. Like, I'm like, woo Like, he can crack. But when you felt the power between the two, because you sparred them both, like, who would you say, like, you wouldn't want to get hit consistently with? Alexander Volsnick. I want to get. Like, David, David, I mean, he got, he got a real good jab. Like, David, like I said, he just overwhelms you with punches. So it's not the actual punches that hurt you. It's just the activity that wears you down. So you, you think, in the sense of Alexander doesn't get worn down? No, I, don't, I, don't, I can't see him getting worn down. Really? If it took Arthur 10 rounds to do it, who's way stronger, hit no, it's night and day. I can't see David coming up from super middleweight, never being in a fight. Tell me one fight David was in that she was like, "Woo, this is a tough man. He might, he might get man. He, this might be a tough fight. Just one." Uh, I mean, to be fair, the Caleb Plant fight, right? A lot of fans wanted to see it. I know they probably favored David in, in yeah. the sense that Caleb right. was coming off. The, but even then, like you were watching the first five rounds, and you were kind of like, "Sheesh, Caleb's so, doing his uh, thing." But okay, then he ooh, got worn down, right? Right. Because Caleb has great feet. Right. Caleb, great job. I spar with him. Tell me, I know. So, so, it, why, so. I know some people say, no, Caleb fades. But at that point, at that rate that David was producing, I'm sure that was probably, if not, maybe the best version of Caleb Plant. Okay, I'm going to ask you this. Now, Alexander, Alexander Volsnick moves similar to that. But what, punches Caleb? extremely hard. Listen, we're going to see. We're going to see. I mean, me, for what I know about boxing, what I've seen from both of them, I got Alexander Volsnick putting hands on David. Mm. Okay. Now, and like, listen, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but from what I'm seeing, David's it's not like he's hard to hit. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he is. It's not like he got extremely good head movement. He's slicking and got extremely good head movement. The only defense is this, and that's because he's fighting smaller guys. That you hit him on the arms and elbows, and and just keep coming, overwhelms you. Now he's fighting somebody big like him, long like him, but stronger. Punch harder, good feet, can do it all. I mean, we. I mean, uh, he 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 gonna have to make some adjustments. He he gonna have to make some. I'm not saying he can't win. He gonna have to make some adjustments. 
while we're at it, I'm just going to throw one monkey wrench question. That, yeah. That, uh, the, the um, I guess the whole fighter's code about, um, you know, when Ryan went up and talked about the, the smoking and then drinking, you know, I know we're human, yeah. right? So, um, just, just as a professional fighter. Yeah, yourself, just, I, I, I definitely want to comment on this. Like, my thing is this, we're, we're all human, but... Okay, okay I'll, I'll break it down to a 9 to 5 so more people can understand it. I know people are going to jump in the comment se sections and say stuff, but I'm going to break it down like this. You got a 9 to 5 and you're a brain surgeon, but you get high right before you work on somebody's brain and kill them. And like, I'm, I'm just human. I'm human. I'm human, but they paying you a million dollars a year. Now, I'm just human. Yeah, but, but and, and I said that to say, like all the money you're getting paid, the opportunities that you're getting that other fighters would love to be in. You know, other fighters would love to be in your shoes and make the money you make and have the popularity that you have. And and you owe the fans more than just I'm human. Like, nah, man, live accordingly. Because Devin is right. You got you got kids looking up to you. You got you got kids looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, live right, man. Live right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'll say as a fighter. Like, you got people who are dying to get the opportunities you get. And I feel like you take it for granted when you do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Smoking. Because you know why? Because when you don't suffer for something, you take it for granted. You're like, oh, I ain't have to. But when you got to bleed for something, you hold it dear to your heart. When I make my first million dollars, I'm not going broke. Because it took me so long to get it, and I had to work so hard for it. I had to suffer so much. I had to persevere. I had to wait. I had to, so much I had to do to get it. So it's like, I'm not just going to go buy crazy stuff and floss and all that. Go spend $40,000 on a Rolex. Like, yeah, I, no, nah, I ain't going to do that because it's like, you know, you, know how, you know how hard I had to work to get this? To spend 40 k of it on a watch? Nah, nah. I had to work too hard for this. So I'm going to be more strategic on how I spend my money so it can last because I had to suffer to get it. You know what I'm saying? So Ryan need to get, get, um, I ain't trying to hear that I'm human. Yeah, of course you're human. But, you know what I'm saying? Live accordingly, man. Like, you're a role model. Live accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Because what does that say to the kids out there? Oh, I can smoke a drink and still be a world champion. But how many kids is really going to be Ryan Garcia? And I'll leave that there. And last thing before I let you go, just uh, when are you coming back? Soon. I just, I'm sorry, I talked to my bro Tio. We're working on some stuff, so I'll be back soon. I don't want to talk too soon, but we're working on some stuff. And um, hopefully, you guys will see me in the fight with Canelo next year. Awesome. And what can they follow you on social media? Lonnie B. The Champ on Instagram, Lionel, Lonnie B. Thompson on Facebook, and Lonnie B. 168 on Snapchat. You know, I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the comments that be showing me love, I love y'all. I see it. You know what I'm saying? And when I fight, Make sure everybody got tickets there. You know what I'm saying? Just hit my gram.